Welcome to Your Future in Sales and Marketing, a podcast that helps you make great career decisions to get the most out of your career journey. We'll introduce you to the AXR network of established senior leaders and a hand-picked group of future aspiring leaders who have it all in front of them. You'll learn what it's like in the top job and how to get there. Your hosts from AXR's specialist sales and marketing recruitment team will also land bonus episodes for you on how to work with recruiters, write a resume and smash an interview, as well as our very popular market updates. It's the podcast that has it all. You can't get this career advice anywhere else. Hello, everybody, to another Your Future in Sales and Marketing podcast from AXR Recruitment and Search. My name is Mike Dixon, and today we're going to look at the world of loyalty. Where is it today? Where will it be tomorrow? How do you know enough to build it into your commercial plans? I'm joined by two absolute loyalty experts, Holly Fenning, Head of Customer Planning and Continuity for Coles, and Sue Temple, Founder and General Manager for L Founders of Loyalty. Welcome, Holly and Sue. How are you? Hey, Mike. Good to be here. Yeah, very good to be here. Fantastic. Well, so you've been here before, but uh, on, on, on the pod and... Um, for those who want to jump back, uh, episode 60, I checked, Sue, that you were on, um, and it was 2023's most downloaded podcast. So, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> let's just see if you can smash it again with uh, the help of Holly. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Uh, absolutely fine. So let's get into this. We'll, we'll do a couple of, a quick icebreaker question, and then we'll jump into careers more in yours, Holly, because we've done yours, Sue. But as uh, say, for those who, um, we'll do a quick summary, but for those who want more detail, episode 60 is where you need to go. Okay, so Icebreaker, you both have an unlimited budget and a month of work. What are you going to do? We're laughing because (laughs) we have the exact same answer for this question and it involves a Formula One. Uh, We're big Formula One fans. We are indeed. Um, We are indeed. Forms part of our Monday chat before we get down to business. Um, So I think it would be following wherever in the world Formula One would be that month and with unlimited money getting very... Nice tickets. Yeah, yeah. Track, track side. <laughs> track side. Parties. Absolutely. Meeting everyone. Yeah. Paddock passes, VIP all <laughs> That's the way, the Mike. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. And uh, the budget is no object. Let's yeah. make it happen. Fantastic. What would the, what would the, if there was like two or three top ones to go to location wise, where would they be? I think you have to go to Monaco, Monaco. of yeah. course. Yeah. It's like iconic because of the, the lifestyle that's yeah. you take a yacht with us mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> of course you really give budget. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also San Marino Grand Prix, uh-huh. which is very famous for a number of drivers, and uh, and Senna in particular, who sadly died at that track. Mm. But it's got a lot of history, racing history. And then of course, you know, be patriotic and get yourself to the British Grand Prix. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely <laughs> Silverstone. Yeah. But then maybe somewhere else for the weather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well the <laughs> yes. weather's no good, you can wait to the next one because yeah. you've got loads of money. Exactly. <laughs> okay, excellent. Right. So mentioned, Sue, that you've been on before, but for those who, who haven't jumped on to episode 60, let, let's just have a quick summary of your career. So what's the whistle stop kind of tour, Sue, that's taking you to to L Founders uh, General Manager? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, real whistle stop. I'm a graduate of languages originally from uh, Bristol University in England and have spent the last 25 years across FMCG, across retail, across agency with Nielsen, and then three years ago landing at L Founders uh, as one of the founders of that business and getting into the mad world of loyalty. And here I am. Great. We'll explore L Founders more and and loyalty, but uh, um, so lots to get into there. So Holly, We'll ask a few more questions of you because we haven't gone through your career. So let's kind of do that. So I'm really interested in just, you know, how a, a career path unfolds. And part of the podcast is all to give others inspiration that there's not just one way to kind of manage your career. There's lots of different pathways. So you graduated from Loughborough yes. in England. <clears throat> We're all from Britain, Britain here. But it wasn't long until you found yourself in Melbourne working for Disney, which Feels like not the most obvious move for a Loughborough grad, but, you know, give me the lowdown. How did that happen? Yeah, definitely. England Midlands is very far away from Melbourne. Uh, So my university degree was international business. And as part of that degree in your third year, you went and did a year in industry. So completely left uni for a year. Worked for a a company in an internship. And that for me was Disney in London. Um, I worked in marketing for their video games team. And then went back to uni. 
and then went traveling. And when I was at Disney for that year, I actually met the Australian team. They came over for a summit and they said the whole, when you're in Melbourne, hit us up, we'll get drinks and take you out. You'll be a poor backpacker. So when I got to Melbourne, I was a poor backpacker, called the team. We went out for drinks and next minute I had a job. Yeah. So yeah. Love what did it. I learn? Well, I was going to ask, just, just often people do the, have those throwaway comments, don't they? Yeah. Just, oh, give me a call when you're in the city yeah, yeah. or I don't. I always do. What, what's, <laughs> yeah, what's yeah, what have you got to lose? lose? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lose. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. People don't say it because they don't want you to call. They say it because they're quite <laughs> quite happy to see you. Yeah. 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 So yeah. make the call and lo and behold, there you are working, yeah. working at Disney in Melbourne. So yes. So seven years you were in Disney for, is that right? And, yes. Or you know, maybe a bit more with your internship. But you know, what, what was it like? What was it like working at Disney? It was amazing. Had an incredible seven years. The Australian office is a lot smaller than the London office, as you can imagine. But the beauty of that was I met a lot of people from a lot of different areas of the business and you get a greater understanding of all the areas of the business. So I was able to go from product marketing to category management to brand marketing. So I felt like a really good understanding of the business in that way. And I think it left me with a broader knowledge around the power of licensing and the power of storytelling, which is something that I've, you know, I will come on to, but I've used later in my career at Coles, but also interconnected business planning. So, you know, the business is set up in such a way where you have your different business areas and then a brand management team that kind of sits holistically over that and learning how to plan in in that way when a business is set up to do that is um it it allows you to think like that naturally in future roles so how to create synergies between mm-hmm. different teams um how to link up your brand plan across a number of different business units so i felt like that was something that really stuck with me after that experience yeah great the some businesses just you get great foundations from mm-hmm. And I've met a few people from Disney over the years and, and the, the thoroughness of, of the exposure and training is, is fantastic. It really is. So you then moved from Disney to Design Works Clothing. So Russell Athletic, Everlast, you know, real strong apparel brands. Yep. What was the interest there? I think Disney, leaving Disney was the hardest decision I've had to make because it was so much fun. Yeah. Amazing company, amazing people. But I think it got to a point in my career where I felt like I really needed to diversify my skill set a bit and retail and a more commercial role was probably what I was missing. Um, so the ro- the move to work with Russell Athletics and Everlast, I was still able to maintain that brand management role, but work closely with retailers. It's product-based, so it was more commercially heavy. So it just felt like the natural step mm. at that point. Mm, mm, great, great. And then into into goals mm-hmm. uh, in 2021. So as marketing manager, collectibles and continuity. So uh, explain a bit about the move to calls. That feels commercial, commercial again. Yes. So you kind of really... I didn't, hadn't had enough. <laughs> yeah, doubling down on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was actually a friend who hit me up about the role because I'd had a bit of exposure to it on the Disney side, their relationship mm. with Woolworths, yeah. and they've run a number of collectible campaigns over the last 10 years. And it was something that... I'd experienced, been a part of, and I saw a real opportunity for Coles to delve into that world as well. So I thought, why not? I've got something new to offer. I'll go in there and spread the licensing love and see how we go. So I moved into that team. Right. And as you've gone through, so then senior marketing manager Mm -hmm. and promoted again now to your current role, just head of customer planning continuity. Are Are those just expansions of your remit for a job well done or how has that kind of unfolded? Well, the continuity and collectible team sits in the same remit as planning. Right. So I'd spent a year looking after the collectible and continuity programs, working with all the areas of the business to bring that to life. Planning is doing that on steroids, essentially, where you're working with all areas of the business, understanding everyone's objectives, what plans are in place, and building one master customer calendar that our marketing team then execute. So you're essentially a filter between the rest of the business and marketing. And so there's consistency across the long-term planning of both roles, but also the number of stakeholders that you're dealing with for the output. So that's why they sit together. The the role, the move into planning, I was a bit apprehensive about, but it seemed like a natural progression and also drawing on some of the experience that I had of Disney of, you know, sitting 
with a halo view of what everyone's doing and coming up with one strategic plan. And I've been doing that for about a year and then the opportunity came up to take the the head of role. And at the time, I was a little bit apprehensive around whether I was ready. Um, I remember I defi- the conversation. Yeah, definitely Holly. had some conversations with Sue around <laughs> it, whether I was ready to take that step up. But then it wasn't long after our CEO, Leah, had just stepped into that role and she was giving a talk about her career path. And she said something that really stuck with me. And she said, you know, if you're ever ready, if you're ever 60% ready for a role, then you're ready for the role and the other 40% will come from experience and learning. And so I just sat there and said, well, I think I'm 60% ready. So let's do it. I, I like that a lot. There's, we approach this concept of readiness and, and mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. In, in, the, in the pod and, and in our jobs as recruiters. And often people wait for that perfect moment, which never really exists. You, you, yeah, you, the, there's always a leap because there has to be a gap between what you're doing and what you're going to do to, to stretch yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and with some people that gap can be a large one, others it, it, it can be a narrow one. But I think for, for a lot of people, particularly females, that the, there's a sense that I've, I've got to be really, really confident myself to make that jump. Yeah. Um, whereas the research will tell you males, if they get close to 60%, they, they, they believe they're masters of the job already. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a nonsense, but, yeah. but they, they will push themselves forward. And I think, so that's a wonderful thing that Leah said yeah. that, that gave you the confidence to say, you know what? That's enough. I, I, 60% is, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a good number actually, because it's, you know, almost two thirds. It's like, yeah, there's a third of this. I can just, I'll pick up and I'll, I'll, I'll get pushed and I'll develop. Really good advice. Good. So you talked a bit about your role within Coles, Holly. Mm-hmm. Just describe loyalty more broadly as we move on to that topic and, and just be quite specific on where does your team fit into that? Because there's a lot of yeah. co- aspects of loyalty within Colts. Yes, definitely. There's We obviously have our partnership with Flybys, which is where it all started, essentially. We've now got some subscription-based loyalty um, offers in market with Coles Plus and Coles Plus Saver. So that's, you know, you pay a monthly subscription for free delivery, 10% off your shop once a month. And then you have the collectible and continuity team, my team. So we focus on more short-term loyalty opportunities so our programs are in market for six to eight weeks if it's a collectibles um two to four months if it's a continuity so we're really after that short-term change and that short-term engagement over the past couple of years these programs have got a little bit more frequent and so a short-term strategy kind of turned into a bit of an always on strategy Mm. Um, but the programs essentially are designed to encourage customers to consolidate their spend in a shop um, shop more frequently and in return get rewarded for that. Yeah. And the difference between collectibles and continuity, mm-hmm. collectibles you know, almost does what it says in the tin a little bit, but yes. just to explain the difference. So uh, collectibles is spend $30 and you get an instant reward. So, and these are usually kids focused six to eight weeks. You're driving that pester power with, with parents, you're driving the tradeability and playground. And then continuity is you spend $20 and you earn a credit. Once you've got enough credits, you redeem that for a higher value item. So mm. we've done partnerships with KitchenAid in this space, KitchenAid Ovenware, um, MasterChef. We've done MasterChef Knives and Cookware. And at Christmas last year, we did Curtis Stone Barbecue. So partnered with L Founders and with one of our ambassadors, Curtis, to design a barbecue range. Yeah, great. Which brings us neatly on to back to Sue. <laughs> yes. So, um, so uh, how do you guys know each other? You obviously know each other pretty well. And, and, just to talk a bit about the partnership between our founders mm-hmm. and Coles. Yeah, I think I'd been in the role for about three months when I first met that Sue. Sounds about so, right. Yeah. Yeah, in the very early learning stages and everything was still um, a bit of a blur. So I think Sue came in and... I also wasn't sure what I was yeah. doing. <laughs> We're both just smiling thought, at each other over the table. <laughs> Holly's got a real clue here what's going on. I, I was in week one. Uh, and I had like a bunch of products and some presentations. I'm like, I'm not really sure <laughs> what we're talking about here, but um, this will be the start of something. Yeah. And it was the start of a conversation about objectives mm-hmm. and customer insights and opportunities for us to partner together. But, you know, that was um, probably 18 months before our first program actually landed in market. So it's been a, it was a long build up and understanding of, Where was the fit between our businesses? What was the right license, the right brand? What was the right product? And what was the right timing in the customer calendar, taking into account what Holly was talking about with that overall Coles, 
you know, calendar that there has to be the right moment. So yeah, it was some um, very fond memories of yeah. a very crazy meeting yeah. that, that got us to where we are now. Which which fantastic. And you know, we'll talk about that journey of loyalty because it as it, it is moving fast, it has mm-hmm. it's changing quickly. We're gonna look at, you know, where is it now and yeah. what does the future look like? But let's, you know, start with the you know current day. You know, Sue, now what can loyalty achieve today commercially compared to say 10 years ago? Yeah. You know, I was thinking back, Mike, to when I was first exposed to loyalty, maybe even 20 years ago, and was always the domain of marketing. Mm. Was a very soft metric, was a brand love, was a net promoter score, or was a very purist score of these customers are 100% loyal to us. And it was a very low number in most cases. And since then, it's evolved into becoming really a core part of the commercial measurement and the commercial impact, be that market share, be that sales, be that trips, frequency, spend. And it could be that purist loyalty score still as well and the brand love score. But commercially, it's become much clearer the role it plays beyond just a qualitative, soft you know, yeah. softer sense. Yeah, perfect. I'd love to just explore based on that, the journey that we're on, where we are with FMCG grocery. But if you look at other sectors, you might have been doing it for longer or doing it differently. Who's kind of really embraced it? Who's doing it very well? And if you've got examples of best practice, that'd be super cool. Yeah, yeah. I I, 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 question for both of you. Yeah, I think, I'm sure Holly wants to jump in here yeah, as well. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's something we talk about a lot, actually, because we, we, when you work in this space, you're hyper aware and alert to mm. what else is going on around and what changes your own behavior. You know, yes, we are professionals, but we are also consumers. We are also shoppers. Yep. And we know when we get influenced and there's one or two, and I mean, it's in every industry, right? Whether it's your banking app is giving you yeah. rewards, your telco is giving you rewards, clothing, pharmacy, whatever. But I think there's two that I look at and one is Mecca in terms of their beauty loop, which mm-hmm. is becoming much more personalized to your skin, your hair, you know, the more they know about you, the more they can give you the free samples that you're going to use. And it's not just a beauty box that you throw away. And the more you spend, the better the beauty box. And the, I can see you nodding, Mike. Well, you know all I've, about the I've, beauty I've, box. I've, 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 I'm, I'm nodding because I've heard people talk about how good the, yes, their yeah, reward program yeah. is at Mecca. So I'm, yes. this is not the first. Yeah. I'm not obviously on their program, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I've you heard about be. it. <laughs> it could be, yeah, it could be, yeah, yeah. And so I think the what they've done there to really offer value when rewards, you know when mm. the box comes out, you know what that means and you know which tier you're in. But the products are value add. They're not mm. products that you just take and, you know, donate to someone else because no, I don't have uh, yeah. oily skin or something. Yeah. Mm. Or I don't use red lipstick. Or red that lipstick. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and in a different sector, I'd look at McDonald's or Macca's in mm. the classic Aussie sense mm-hmm. in what they've done digitally with their app to reward, to really be sensitive to like cost of living crisis and offer value, offer tailored promotions, excitement, you know, games even, you know, that like they're really aware of that's the way to kind of lock in. It's a trips frequency play for mm. them away from other QSRs or takeaway food restaurants. Yeah. And it seems really fully integrated with Macca's across yes. the, the kind of purchasing cycle, you know, yeah, and correct. every part of their marketing yeah. link, exactly. link, links together very well. Yeah. 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 What have you seen, Holly? What do you think? Well, Sue stole one of mine. Because <laughs> 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 um, I, again, I was trying to think of me personally, Yeah. what programs am I signed up to and which ones do I actively follow rather that you know if you actually had a look at how many loyalty programs you're a part of there would be probably 10 or 12 but Mm. how many do you actually you know count what you're doing and and seek the reward so mecca is definitely one of those for me the other one is uber and the subscribing to uber one um you know you get discount off every trip that you do you get free delivery on uber eats and it's something that you know Mm. people use uber quite a lot and so i'm constantly reminded and they'll send me emails being like you've saved this amount on this trip and then i get a monthly summary saying you've saved this amount over the month and it just makes me feel good about subscribing um to the service so uber's definitely one Um, and the other one is amazon prime and Mm. for a similar reason and i've got you know my content on the tv got 
free delivery, fast delivery, Amazon Prime Day, which has amazing deals. It's just a a loyalty program that I, you know, and it's not, it's only a subscription. You don't have to build up to get the maximum, um, I guess, tiering offers, Mm -hmm. which does work in some industries, but for, you know, you retail every day, you pay a flat out fee and you get access to everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing that all of those four examples, four or five, have in common is they really understand their customer yeah. and they're very clear what's going to grow the bit, what's loyalty mean to them mm. and how does that play out in the offer? So Uber One was a great innovation of, you know, you, these are the people who are making mm-hmm. lots of trips with you anyway. Mm. You might be losing three or four more trips to a regular cab or a different um, ride share service. So let's lock them in lock more of those trips into loyalty and then their whole offer gears around that to make sure that that's they're very very clear about the choices they make great examples and 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 you're right when you take a step back and think about it it's touching so many different parts of our life as shoppers and consumers now yes um yeah yeah i'm kind of like oh yeah yeah, I'm in that. I'm in that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you'll get an email every now and again. You're like, oh, and I'm in that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And exactly. It's, I think recently the Australian Loyalty Association recently published their report, mm. which is worth a read for people who haven't read it, yes. about membership of um, schemes in Australia is at an all-time high. Right. Swipe rates are at an all-time high. Yeah. And it's because customers are seeing value so from the seeing, schemes. People are, 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 no. are, are embracing it. And people are seeking yeah. value because yeah. of the environment we're in yeah. right now. But also they're getting rewarded and mm. they are noticing that there's a benefit from, you know, being part of this, be it, you know, a free lipstick or be it money off your shop or be it, um, you know, a free cheeseburger now and then. Yeah. So it's got real breadth. It touches every part of mm-hmm. our, our lives, it seems, which if you take a step back, think about it. But so, so how do you measure the impact looking at this commercially again? So maybe, Sue, if you could answer from a, I guess, a, a agency supplier perspective and and Holly, um, more from the retailer point, point of view, yep. but, you know, commercially, how do you yeah. kind of um, see, you know, measure what that's doing for you? Yeah, I think the key thing is to to be aware of how you could measure it. Right. So there's many, many different ways mm. you could look at loyalty. And I, as I said, it's moved away from that purist metric or that brand love towards something much more commercial. So the, the first step is to identify what's your customer behavior and what's the behavior that is you wanting to influence mm. to drive that loyalty. And then that's what you measure. So for some businesses, that's a frequency measure. For some businesses, that's a spend measure. For some businesses, that could be a share of stomach measure or a share of market measure if that customer behavior is across multi-channel, for example. So you can measure it in the right way for your business. But I think unless you are deliberate about thinking that, and I, this goes all the way back to my PepsiCo days and being told what you measure is how you behave. Mm. You know, it's like saying, I'm going to get fit. Well, you've got to say, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and I'm measuring that, <laughs> right? And then yeah. I might get fit. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's the same with loyalty, but there are so many ways you could measure it. And I think that's the the, the advice I mm. put out there is be clear. What does it mean for your business, for your store, for your brand, for your category? And then start from there. Yeah, great. And Holly, from the retailer point of view? Yeah, well, I think if... If I take these, the short-term loyalty programs as an example, a couple of years ago, these were run very sporadically. It was to drive sales uplift, very short, sharp return. What we've seen over the years is that there's almost a two-speed approach to how you can measure it. It's programs individually, how they're driving additional sales, as Sue mentioned, driving swipe rate, engagement with a loyalty program. And then you've got your long-term goals as well. So your differentiated value that you're offering your customer um, your sustainability promise, I guess. So an example of this is the builders collectible programs that I've worked on with Sue. We, to align with our broader coal sustainability promise, we said no more plastic mm. and our collectibles have to be curbside recyclable, um, you know, easy for customers mm-hmm. to dispose of if they don't want any more, they don't want them anymore. Um, so again, that's a long-term goal that you can use to measure this. So as Sue mentioned, it's very broad. You can look at it from a number of different angles and, you know, a loyalty campaign isn't as transactional anymore as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the planning piece comes into your role. Yes. As well. Yeah, yes. good. Okay. Um, 
Where's retail in Australia with loyalty today? You know, we've talked about some really good examples of, mm-hmm. of, of loyalty programs. What's being done well and where do you think the future will come from? So I kind of look at it in three fundamental buckets for loyalty. You've got value. So is what you're offering your customer what they really want? As Sue mentioned, really understanding customers. And I think that the retail sector is doing that very well. The second bucket is around simplicity. And I mean this from two aspects. So firstly, is it easy to collect your rewards? Is it easy to get to a point where you're rewarded? But also what's your user experience like? If it's clunky, if it's hard to you know, connect your app or your card or yeah. you're really going to disengage customers. And then third is personalization. So as customers, we're now handing over our data to businesses and we expect them to know what to do with it and to give us offers that are personalized to us. So I think where we're at is from a value perspective and a um, and a simplicity, a user experience perspective, we're in a really good spot. And I think we're on the cusp of what is going to be a big play in the personalization space. I will use this opportunity to shamelessly plug <laughs> where we're at with Flybys Coles right now. And, and I'm doing this because it's a personal experience Um that I've had over the past couple of months. So I'm part of, obviously have my flybys card. And every time I get 2000 points, I get $10 off checkout. I pay $7 a month to subscribe to Coles Plus Saver. And once a month, I get 10% off my shop. And at a time when cost of living and grocery prices is so, um, you know, it's top of mind for consumers. 80% of the time that I've been to the shops recently, I'm at checkout asking if I want money off my shop. And it me. I leave the shop feeling good mm, yeah, rather than yeah. worrying about the price of my groceries. So I think yeah. that kind of explains where yeah. retail in general, it's not just Coles and flybys, where retail in general is at. I think they've got a good understanding of their customer, got a good experience, and now it's what are we going to do with all this data? Yeah, it's a nice message to be reinforced at checkout. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, not just once, but time and time again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. So yeah, personalization I, coming your way, right. Mm, okay. Yeah, and I think so, it's that, like what we're saying about mm. like that instant reward like people mm. want a, re, you know, you sign up for something and maybe in six months you might get a few points. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. like but people are very impatient yeah. these days with rewards. I want mm. my instant reward. I want my money off now. I want my free coffee this morning or whatever it is, mm. um, whatever the, the promise from that loyalty activation is. And I think we see in Australia, we've seen a real expansion of that customer insight piece to get behind what's right. Mm. So I think Australia in retail especially, is really leading. Australia is leading in digital in terms of apps and the use of um, electronic messaging, you know, like the way to keep track of your rewards and redeem them easy. Mm. Um, And we also see the strength of the offer here really in terms of our types of loyalty programs with Elf founders around the world. The offer here is always a free product. And in Europe, it might be these points or save up Mm -hmm. these um, credits and you've got to pay two euros to get a saucepan or something Mm. we never do we don't do that here it's always a free mechanic and that gives real value back to the customer so we're doing pretty well yeah in 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 global terms i think so and is there anything else that's happening overseas that might come to australia I think we've got a lot of, I know we've got a lot of global retailers watching Coles <laughs> right now really? um, yeah, because yeah, like, we, we get yeah. inquiries yeah. through Elf founders from the US, from Brazil, Great. from Mexico, you know, to ask about mm-hmm. either the sustainable collectibles that we do with paper, mm-hmm. no plastic, or the certainly the Curtis Stone programs. I think overseas is perhaps a broader selection of categories. Okay. That's probably the only thing I can see. Yeah. Like you might have fitness, you might have camping gear, you might Bedding. have bedding, yeah. towels, you know, they, they tend to go more broad yeah. with mm. with the categories, whereas here it's a very, for Coles, you know, um, and for Woolies actually as well, it's very, has to be connected to food and grocery, you know, that's yeah. their core business. Yeah, where you have license to play. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I think with our programs, I mean, back to those buckets that I spoke about, like the value is really in, we've partnered with big brands, KitchenAid, we've partnered with our ambassadors, Curtis Stone, we're offering high quality products. And then our digital experience, you collect all your credits on your phone rather than getting tokens and stamps yeah. at the checkout. Yeah. So it's very easy. So yeah, following the same principles. Yeah, great. Because the consumer, I presume, is becoming more sophisticated mm-hmm. and demands more. I know that just it's interesting, guys, I've just changed 
airline, as in where I, if I fly a long haul, we've moved airlines. And, and my wife's so impatient. She's like, oh, when do we get, you know, lounge access? When do we get upgrades? I'm like, it doesn't happen instantly. She's like, well, why not? <laughs> we, ch- we, ch- yeah. we changed our lounge. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I get you. Maybe... Maybe they need to be further ahead than this. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a few more trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Which Thanks. one have you switched to? Oh, we've gone from Singapore to Cathay. Okay. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 But, anyway. but, it's, but it's exactly yeah. that. So we were talking before about customer, knowing the customer. Customer expectation mm. is constantly moving. Yeah. So it only takes one airline to promise you that. Like we'll, and some of them I think domestically have, like we'll match your tier. It's correct. They have, right. Yeah, yeah. So smart to go. I don't have to wait to earn that. Mm. Um, in terms, I think some of the telcos or energy companies did it as well, mm. which is a smart thing to do. So otherwise you've got to really be committed to like earning, you know, biding your time mm. before you get those rewards mm. and people are not. No, not so patient to wait for their totally. rewards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> my know. wife included. But anyway, here we go. Um, so, so putting our, our futurist hats on, yes. if we were to kind of really leap forward, you know, 10, 20 years, you know, into, into the future, which nowadays is a long time because technology moves so quickly. Yeah. But what are the things down the pipe that you could say, wow, that might be the future within loyalty? Is it, you know, really kind of putting yourself out there? What What might we see? I get very excited about this question. I think there are a couple of trends coming through that will, I mean, it might not be, you know, it might be what we think is going to be 10, 20 years down the line, but realistically it'll be five years. Yeah, probably. I think the, you know, the growth of AI and seeing how that plays into loyalty is going to be really interesting over the next few years to the point of, you know, you'll kind of get served something before you even know that you need it or want it or earn it. Mm. And then also brand partnership. So I think right now we're kind of, in this phase of everyone searching for their loyalty programs and you've got five or six and you're really working towards rewards for each one. But it'll be really interesting to see how businesses start to come together to combine their loyalty program. So it's easy for you to earn, you know, you shop in one place, but your points are getting spread across another. And interesting. There are some in play at the moment, but I think there's definitely advancements in brand partnerships within loyalty. That makes perfect sense. I like that. Yeah, Good yeah I agree with you there, Holly. Mm-hmm. And I think we're also seeing like the evolution of giving back as well mm-hmm. so uh, you're earning my loyalty but i'm also you're doing good by the same time so we have a division called loyalty with purpose which is about giving back for every reward you know every certain number of rewards that is given away that there is something that flows back mm-hmm. to help clean up the oceans yeah. or you know to support a charity in some way and customers like to know that that's a, a way that that is also feel good. doing good. Mm. I think that will come. And then NFTs are interesting. Oh, really? In terms of reward. Love NFT chat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know far too much about NFTs <laughs> than I ever thought I was ever going to know. And like a, a purely digital reward that has true value, that mm, is truly mm. unique and then is tradable in the same way that today footy cards are tradable or Pokemon cards mm-hmm. are tradable, that you know the technology is not quite mainstream enough just yet in terms of the digital wallets for NFTs, but it's coming. Mm. It's coming fast. And we've got an eye on that and what that might mean for how we reward our programs. Fantastic. It's, uh, so a lot coming. Yeah, that's, I love looking forward and just seeing yeah, what, what yeah, things yes. could be. And, and it's like, um, what's that show? The uh, Black Mirror. I don't know if you, oh, I love yeah. Black Mirror. Yeah, the near yes. future science fiction. Yes. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, it's coming. You can see it happening. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. great. So everything you're saying, I think, oh, it makes perfect sense. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, 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 good. Yeah, you can, you know, and you kind of like, you think, as Holly said, you think it's like years away and then the next minute you're doing a program and it's I, I, kind yeah. of like, oh, yeah. this happened. Yeah. Yeah, great. So, I want to finish on career advice. Um, mm-hmm. And we've explored your journeys, um, Holly, more of yours today, Sue, more previously in, into loyalty. Just give me a sense of more broadly, who, who works in loyalty? So you guys do, obviously, but you know, is it marketers and insights people or is it broader than that? Right now, it's kind of a, it seems to be more of a bespoke team. Um, certainly bespoke suppliers, such as L Founders. Uh, in terms of certain types of loyalty programs, but um, it needs to be the whole organization. Mm-hmm. It's like anything. We mm. talk to insights in the same way that if it's going to have a real impact through your business, it should be marketing and commercial and insights have to play a role 
getting to the crux of what is going to drive loyalty in your business. And back in the day when I worked at Woolworths, we did a big piece about loyalty. And for some people, it was, I can always get a car park. It's close to my house, right? It was the real basics of Mm. they have the strawberry jam I want. Yeah. You know, so loyalty can also be those real basic things. But that then does involve the whole business, distribution, execution, merchandising, category management. If you're going to put loyalty through your business, it has to go through everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago where you had your lonely CRM manager or your CRM team who would, you know, be focused on emails. But now it really does touch everyone more broadly. And there's a big opportunity in that space as well for analytics and data management and that kind of thing. So it's not just really marketing and insights, there's also the back end work behind that as well. If loyalty continues the way it is, which it feels like it is because we're watching it happen, then it touches, as you say, many more parts of the business and therefore touches everyone's jobs. Mm -hmm. So to be more effective in your role, you've really got to understand it. Mm -hmm. What could people, listeners today, be doing, whether it's and, and, and whether it's in sales, marketing category are probably three main yep. buckets. What could they be doing to understand loyalty better? Listening to the podcast is a start, right? But <laughs> <laughs> call us up. Yeah, we're gonna be <laughs> really um, Yeah, what, 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 you know, they're gonna be thinking, gosh, okay, my brand plans and my customer plans and my mm-hmm. category plans, I need to be, you know understanding where does loyalty fit in there and I suspect not everyone's doing that at the moment but they probably need to be soon yeah definitely like I think it comes back to basic marketing fundamentals understanding your customers who said earlier um your segmentation not everyone's going to want the same reward for example and people are going to want access to that in different ways you know you've got a generation coming through that are much more digitally savvy and they need something convenient versus an older customer who really needs something very simple to understand in the tech space so i think it really goes back to you know back to basics in Mm. a way and making sure that you're thinking about loyalty every step along the way of your planning yeah yeah i think it's the same but i think it's first of all read, immerse yourself in the world of loyalty. And there's two or three organizations out there. The Australian Loyalty Association is one. That's a bit more loyalty card centric. And then there's a bunch of other shopper marketing agencies who are activating loyalty. It might not feel like it, but it's they're all parts of loyalty. So that could be the My Coke Rewards app. That might mm-hmm. be a program that we might do with a collectible. It might be something really simple as a a free giveaway for a certain moment of time Mm. that Pitt Street Mall had Mm. a big Lego, outdoor Lego thing for kids to play on. That was a part of driving loyalty to that part of uh, Westfield shopping Mm. center. Like it's all around us. Mm. So yes, reading up and, and thinking about what loyalty is and broadening your mind to loyalty is more than just loyalty cards. And if you get a few head ups on LinkedIn after this, that's okay. Yeah, People of course. Ask some questions. <laughs> of course, Always. of course. <laughs> Always happy to chat. <laughs> the millions of listeners might be uh, <laughs> queuing up at your door. Yeah. And finally, what about you guys? What does the future have in store for your careers? Holly, I'll start with start with you because you've done yeah. most of it your career today. Where do you go from here? Who knows, Mike? I, I, to be honest, even preparing for this podcast and delving a bit more and, and taking a step back in time to reflect, I'm really enjoying being in loyalty. I think there's huge potential to come. As I mentioned, we're about to enter a really exciting time um, with loyalty. But then if you know you go back to the start of the podcast and listen to my career jumps, it's kind of, oh, go on then, I'll give that a go. <laughs> so who I'm 60% knows? ready. I'm 60% ready, so who knows? <laughs> yeah. So what, where do, where do you, we've, we've done this about a few months ago, a year ago <laughs> yeah. or so, but, um, uh, um, yeah. you know, where's your thinking now? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I, was, I, I always think about this. I think every move I made previously, I was like, I need to close a gap. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I wanted a retail experience. Mm. So I'll join Woolworths. Then I wanted a data experience. So I joined Neil's. So like I felt I had these big boxes to tick and then you tick all of those boxes and you go, and I ended up in this loyalty space, which who knows? what's next from here but in the rate that it's expanding and innovating and growing and developing like there's never a dull moment right Holly there's never a dull moment (laughs) so it's always (laughs) new ideas new thoughts new concepts and because customer behavior is changing Mm. because customer expectations move and data richness expands our thinking of who we're 
creating rewards for and why and then what's the solution yeah and the tech behind that as well so just that like problem yeah. solving i just love that part of yeah of what i do and so i think i might just stick and do this for yeah. a bit mike yeah. if that's all right well <laughs> it feels it feels like it's moving the, the, if we, as we jump forward 10 years whatever yeah. possibly five the, there's so much coming in 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 loyalty to the consumer that that the organization behind that is huge therefore the the roles in terms of where they are now where they're going to be in five years who knows so yeah, having this open exactly. mindedness as you say holly to whatever it is and you are kind of the same so it's exactly see where it takes us yeah uh, but being open to the change and opportunity is probably the main key lesson i think yeah and just keep learning keep yeah, keep, keep learning. trying keep keep trying different things yeah. keep experimenting and where there is pockets of global things interesting happening let's bring it in let's look at it and then otherwise we're innovating and taking it to the next level whatever that means and yeah it's it's a great space to it be in it is a really great space to be in good way to finish <laughs> come, <What>? over. <laughs> <laughs> come over come over jo 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 join the cult yeah. <laughs> um, yes. really enjoyable conversation guys loved it uh, what a fascinating topic uh, it's touching all of our lives, changing all the time. We're getting more sophisticated in our demands as consumers. Um, the organization around it is 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 moving so fast and pushing so far, so yeah. hard. I, I love it. So I really appreciate your time and and energy and insights in, in this conversation. I think we'll have a, a hopefully as many listeners as last time, so maybe more. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure there'll be more with Holly. Holly <laughs> yeah, here. Exactly. I'm sure there'll be more. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> hey, you, thank, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Guys, if you're new to the pod or haven't uh, connected yet with the XR team, don't wait until you think you need to move a job. Our purpose is to help you understand your career journey, to have awesome career conversations and to make great career decisions at the right time. Connecting with AXR gives you access to our industry-leading salary guides, monthly blogs on how is the market and much, much more as they say. From me, Matt Dixon, thanks for listening and we'll be back soon with another pod to help your future in sales and marketing. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast from AXR Recruitment and Search. We're passionate about helping you get the most out of your sales and marketing career. Keep listening as we bring you more career insights and advice from Australia's inspiring sales and marketing leaders. See you next time on Your Future in Sales and Marketing.